Welcome back to the sweatshop boys and girls in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to swap out an alternator on this 2009 Subaru Forester now boys and girls as you can see our alternator is right here on top of the engine This particular engine is the 2.5 liter single overhead cam EJ motor But if you have the EJ double overhead cam it is in exactly the same place It is a little bit more crowded on the EJ double overhead cam But it is basically the same process It is definitely something that you at home can take care of yourself It is a really simple job if you are handy Now boys and girls that being said what you're going to you need to do is of course determine whether you have a bad alternator or not in order to do so you will need a multimeter first things first boys and girls i know for sure our alternator is bad because our battery light came up on the dashboard but that can mean two things either you have an overcharging alternator or an undercharging alternator most times boys and girls it is an undercharging alternator that you will have so how do we test that well let's go get our multimeter and i'll show you how of course before i jump into the live action boys and girls do me a big favor and hit that subscribe button don't forget to hit the notification bell as well so you never miss one of my new videos so the first thing you're going to do whenever checking for a bad alternator boys and girls is get yourself a multimeter with your multimeter what you're going to need to do is connect it to your battery to check of course the voltage turn your multimeter on and then connect your leads currently i am sitting at 11.4 volts which is definitely not enough to turn this thing over so what we're gonna do is throw a charger on this thing and fire it up now boys and girls whether it be jumper cables or a charger any electrical device that is going to feed more juice into your dead battery what you need to do is be very aware of how you connect that device specifically what i'm talking about is most times whenever a battery is full of corrosion it'll bubble out from the positive side and you'll see a bunch of corrosion that is green in color generally whenever you connect a battery it is very important that you connect the positive side first and then connect the ground side the reason this is is because if you connect it the opposite way around the chances are greatly increased for you to have a battery potentially explode on you if it is full of hydrogen now when removing it it is exactly the opposite you want to remove the negative first and then the positive last ideally you should be hooking up your negative cable to somewhere on the frame or on the engine but with today's modern engines it's a bit of a pain because it's kind of confusing everything's usually covered in black plastic which doesn't really help you but uh, yeah it depends on the manufacturer but that's a story for another day if if you absolutely need to hook up to the battery it is possible just be careful wiggle them and then you can go ahead and turn on your charger now we're going to give it a good five to ten minutes to charge up and then we will see you back we'll start it up and then measure the voltage at the battery coming out of the alternator now boys and girls it has been about five minutes here and the battery has been nicely charging what we need to do now is start this thing up to see what that alternator is producing if anything so we're going to start it up with the battery charger on and then i'm going to disconnect the battery charger so we see how much voltage the alternator is producing We gotta give it another five minutes. Okay, boys and girls, let's try that again. Son of a bitch. Well, boys and girls, I uh, am growing impatient and I'm just gonna throw a jumper pack on this so I can demonstrate the point without wasting any more of my time. Okay, now, boys and girls. Ooh, 10. I think the battery might be shot too. Anyhow. As you can see, we are at 14, and as this guy dropped or disconnected, we are now at 8 volts. So, we can confirm that our alternator is useless. Well, our battery bounced back a bit, so that's good. But, boys and girls, that was uh, 10 minutes of my life that I will never get back in order to demonstrate to you how to diagnose a bad alternator. Now... That being said, boys and girls, we're going to go ahead and throw a nice used one at this thing because this thing is just a parts car, but I'm tired of boosting this stupid thing to get it in and out of my shop. 
That's enough pointless rambling. Let's go ahead and get started. So for our first step, boys and girls, in relation to the alternator, we're going to need to disconnect our battery. Now, boys and girls, this is one of the simplest jobs out there, especially on a Subaru. It makes life so much easier when you own a Subaru and you need to replace an alternator. It's not like some of the other manufacturers out there where it turns into a real fiasco. This one is quite simple. All we need to do, boys and girls, in our first step is remove these two panels. Usually, there should be two clips here. Fortunately for me, they are missing. Remove that guy, take this guy here off. You'll need a 10 millimeter. And then there's a rubber gasket there that holds this guy in place. You just need to yank up on it gently. And there we go. Our alternator is exposed and right there for us to swap out. It's wonderful. You need very little tools for this job. You will need a 12 millimeter and a 3 8 ratchet, provided a gorilla or some sort of Hulk type creature has not put this thing into the car. Loosen off the tensioner bolt. Once you have loosened up this tensioner bolt here, you're going to go ahead and loosen this one that holds the alternator in place. You really should have got a deep socket for that. Don't be like Jimmy, boys and girls. Use a deep socket at home. It'll make your life quite a bit easier. I'm gonna go trade this one in and get one soon. Now, second thing in relation to the tensioner on this side is the actual bolt that does the tensioning. This guy here can be a real pain in the ass because no one likes to anti-seize them for whatever reason. So when you're twisting this guy, don't apply more and more pressure. You wanna check it to see if it's gonna move at all. And this one's not going to, great. Spray a little bit WD-40 on it. What is, what is, what are you doing, man? Come on, just, fuck. There we go. Now we're gonna give it some time to sit. I'm gonna go get my deep socket and hope to God that this guy comes out. Okay, boys and girls, well, we got our handy dandy impact driver. We're gonna just blip the throttle a bit here and hope that it breaks free. That's not happening. really want you to break free. Oh, fuck. Well, boys and girls, if you live in the Rust Belt, you will probably run into this issue as well. This is really, a, for lack of a better term, pain in the ass, but it's not the end of the world. You will need some sort of heating device. Um, I'm going to assume that most of you boys and girls at home have a heating gun or access to one. Uh, if you don't, torches is the way to go. Just don't burn your house or the vehicle down. Let's try it with a heating gun just to see what will happen. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Of course, Unless you are replacing your belt, boys and girls, you want to save it. So, let's go ahead and remove the belt. Get your 12 mil and wind this guy out all of the way. Okay, with this guy out of the way, we can now remove our belt. Now, boys and girls, with our belt out of the way, what I would usually do is just clamp this guy with a vice grip up here, heat it up with my torches, and it would come loose relatively quick. Of course, I know that most of you won't have torches at home, so what I'm going to do is attempt this with a heat gun to see whether that will work. Grab yourself a vice grip, boys and girls. Pull this stupid contraption all the way up and clamp it in place. Oh, we might have to get a bigger vice grip. You want to clamp it in a way that allows you to impact it without it coming off. Yeah, this is not going to work, so i got to get another one. I'll be back. Get yourself a vice grip like this, and then clamp it. Yeah, seems to be working much better. Now, full disclosure, boys and girls, I have tried this before. I can't remember exactly on what. I think it was one of these bolts or something like this. And it actually did work. So that's why I'm showing you this again. To show you boys and girls that you're not stuck completely. Of course, whenever using any sort of heating device, it is very important that you don't burn yourself or anything else. Don't burn your house down, especially if you're doing this in the driveway. Yeah. Just let it get nice and hot. All right. Oh, there's a higher setting. <laughs> Good job, Jimmy. Now, what I'm looking for, boys and girls, is as it comes up to temperature, make sure nothing around it is obviously getting really hot or burning. 
Second thing is we're looking for that WD-40 that I sprayed on earlier to burn off. Then we know that that block of aluminum is getting nice and hot. Of course, get your gun, give it a shot here and there to see what's going on. Well, would you look at that, boys and girls? It is coming out. Now to save ourselves from another headache, well, I mean, this is a parts car, so I don't really care. But as you can see, boys and girls, that worked relatively well. I'm going to still apply some anti-seize to this part, even though it is a parts car. I don't want to have the headache in case I sell that part and need to get it off. Of course, I'm not talking about this dead pile of junk. I'm talking about the nice used one that I'm going to be putting in this thing. With that out of the way, boys and girls, we can now go ahead and disconnect our electrical connectors. What we're going to do is give it a little bit of time to cool down because I don't want to brush my wrist up against this thing and burn it. I've already got all kinds of cuts and bruises and I don't want to have any more. Grab yourself a nice pocket-sized screwdriver and then just pop open this clip here. That will expose the 12 millimeter nut that holds your charge cable in place. Of course you should loosen it up with a ratchet just because if it is overly tight you don't want to break or damage anything. Obviously if it's on the alternator that you are taking out of there it doesn't really matter. The rebuilder is going to replace most of that crap anyhow. Well I think. I'm not sure because I'm not a rebuilder. Long story short of course you don't want to break anything on the alternator because if you have to give it back for a core they won't accept it most times if anything is damaged. Go ahead and grab your long or deep 12 millimeter and turn this guy completely out. Make sure you place your hand on that bracket in the back of the alternator because it will fall into the abyss of your engine bay and be a real pain in the ass to get sometimes. Place this in a safe place. If you're rotating the long bolt and it's not coming out for whatever reason, what you can do is swing this guy up and down like this and it should come loose like so. Now, this boys and girls right here is one of the most challenging parts of removing your alternator. This clip here, for whatever reason, can be a very stubborn bucket and it will most times break, especially if you're in the rust belt and you are in a rush or overly aggressive. You need to be very gentle with this thing and take your time because if you break it, you're going to the scrapyard because they don't sell this harness at a cheap price. You can get it separate, but it is damn expensive. So tools you will need boys and girls a number of flat screwdrivers and prying devices in order to work this thing off nice and gently first thing you want to do is of course unclip it what i like to do is push the harness into the alternator if you can get it to budge that's usually a good sign if you can and then you want to take your pry bar and hopefully catch two of the little sections on the alternator plug in order to get it to go Come on, just cooperate. Now, what you want to do is just slowly work it back and forth. Wiggling is the key. And then slowly, it should come out relatively easy if it's not stuck in there with all sorts of grime and sand and grit. Luckily, this guy isn't so bad. Of course, whenever prying off a connector, never pull it from the wiring because if you do and the wiring separates from the actual harness, you could cause yourself another headache, which you don't want. With that out of the way, boys and girls, our alternator is free. Now you can dump this thing in the garbage if you're not taking it back for a core or take it to the scrapyard to make a little money with this thing. Now, of course, grab your replacement alternator and slide it into place. This one here is a brand used one, which I hope is in good condition. Uh, I don't even know, I haven't tested it, but uh, we're gonna hope for the best. Fingers crossed, boys and girls. Place this thing on the back of the alternator. Make sure you support it with anything and everything that you have because it loves to fall off and no one wants to go fishing around in that abyss over there. Grab this guy here. Oh wait, that's the wrong bolt. Now you look stupid, Jim. Your alternator in place, you're going to slide this bolt with this guy here back into its home. Now, get this troublesome bracket, slide it in behind. Pay attention whenever doing this because you don't want it to drop into the engine bay. A real pain to get out. Get yourself your 12 mil, the deep one that is, and just thread it in. 
Don't snug it up, of course. You just want it to be in there. You can apply some anti-seize to this. It's not extremely important. Yeah, let's just apply some anti-seize to it. Now we can go ahead and thread this piece in with this aluminum block piece. Of course, apply some anti-seize to your bolt. Same thing, boys and girls. Do not tighten it. You just want to snug it up. Now, let's get our belt and put that back into place. Obviously, if you are doing this job at home, you want to check the condition of your belt. Our belt is complete crap, but being that this is a parts car, I don't care. So, of course, we're going to reuse this thing. Of course, if your belt looks like that at home and you like your car or care about your car being reliable, replace it. Grab your tensioning bolt, of course, douse it in anti-seize so that you don't have the same issue that tissues won't solve again. And then just catch it by hand. Oh boy, this is I'm making me look bad here. Okay, there we go. Once you catch it by hand, boys and girls, you can run it up with your impact driver. Now, what I will tell you boys and girls, if you are replacing your belt at home, it is important to get the Subaru belt. The reason being is because most of the aftermarket belts are slightly bigger. That's not generally an issue on the older Subarus, but with these newer Subarus, anything from like 2005 and up, or 2004 I think it was, around that time slot, anything from there and up with the EJ single overhead cam, as you tension it, you will notice that the bolt for your tensioner will come into contact with your belt of course in my situation i don't really care if you get the subaru belt they are smaller and you won't have this issue of course it is possible to get the smaller belt from the aftermarket world generally it's going to be a little bit harder to get because most of your part suppliers won't have that belt on their system as a direct replacement they usually have the bigger belt anyhow that being said boys and girls we can now go ahead and connect our connectors silicone spray is never a bad idea with this connector definitely makes it a lot easier for it to go on i would definitely spray that stuff if this was a car that was a customer's or my own but being that it is a parts car i don't care because this thing's probably going to come out once i sell this engine or some other part that renders this car useless anyhow that's enough rambling go ahead and grab your 12 millimeter with your ratchet this bolt here should always be tightened by hand you do not i repeat do not want to impact this thing on that is a bad decision because you will possibly break it and if you do it will suck i'm not sure exactly what the torque spec is for this i would not exceed 15 foot pounds realistically 10 foot pounds is more than enough for this bolt here and then for these guys here the torque specs i believe are 18 foot pounds but between 15 and 20 is fine for this now if you have a rebuilt alternator this bolt here you do not want to torque to anything more than 15 foot pounds if you torque it more than that because they usually top the housing on a rebuilt alternator you will end up stripping it most times that's generally what happens you'll know that it has happened because generally you will see a longer bolt with a nut combination on the back of the alternator so just trying to help you out there boys and girls so that you don't make the same mistake at home of course tighten these guys up i'm not going to be torquing this because again parts car That's good enough for that. And now, boys and girls, usually I would be telling you to put this crap back, but this is going to go on to my car because it's missing. And again, because it's a parts car, I don't care to put this back. Plus, the clips weren't there to begin with, so I'm not really going to be showing you much. Of course, now with our alternator back in the car, boys and girls, the moment of truth is upon us. It is time for us to fire this thing up and see whether this guy here is producing any voltage. Specifically, it should be producing between 13.5 and 14.5 volts. Okay, let's do that. Now, boys and girls, we have been charging our battery for a little bit. Hopefully, it has some juice. If it doesn't, well, that's going to suck. Anyhow, what we need to do now is, of course, reconnect the thing. So, I'm going to disconnect the charger. The best way to disconnect the charger is, of course, to shut the thing off first. But, if you are charging a car and by yourself and you don't have someone else to disconnect it from the other side, what you want to do is always take this guy off first. Even though there is a spark from that area, you are a lot less likely to have the battery blow up. So, heed the warning, boys and girls. Now, 
Verify that your key is turned off to the off position. You shouldn't be too careful. The battery's already off, so disconnect the negative terminal. With your negative terminal off, connect your positive terminal, tighten it up. and then connect your negative terminal again. That way, if there is a spark or something that you left on in the car, the chances of you having a spark on the positive terminal is highly unlikely. Of course, this is important. The reason being is because whenever you charge a battery, there is a certain amount of hydrogen gas that is produced naturally because of the charging process. So if you do have a leak, the chances of an explosion when disconnecting or reconnecting on the positive side and introducing a load to the circuit is extremely high. So avoid the potential issue. The reason why I talk about this so much is I know a dude who actually had this happen to him. And I'll tell you, his face doesn't look the same and he is deathly afraid now of batteries. So you really want to make sure it doesn't happen the majority of the time. And I myself am guilty of, you know, connecting or putting a live wire to the positive side first, especially when you're not thinking because generally we, you know, as mechanics are flat rate and we just want to get through stuff. So you do make mistakes. You just want to minimize the cost of those mistakes and you want to make sure that you are aware of what could potentially happen so that you don't continuously make that mistake. And of course, boys and girls, you want to minimize those mistakes because you don't want to be the guy who has a story to tell because that would suck. Now, Let's move this stuff out of the way. Let's attempt to start this thing up and see what happens. Yeah, okay, so the battery is garbage. I'll put this on my smart charger and see what happens. For now, let's connect our boost pack. Now, boys and girls, we'll go ahead and connect our multimeter to see what our voltage is. Yeah, there we go. As you can see, boys and girls, our alternator is working and charging quite high because our battery is garbage. This is normal. Now, of course, with your alternator, what you want to do while testing it is bring it up to operating temperature. Make sure it gets nice and hot, and that way it will tell you whether it is in for the long haul or not, if it's a used alternator. If it's a brand new alternator, you should be okay right out of the box, provided your alternator rebuilder is good. Not always the case with some rebuilders out there, but what to do, sometimes you get bad ones. Now, boys and girls, as long as your alternator continues charging at operating temperature between 13.5 volts and 14.5 volts you are good to go sometimes when your battery is complete crap like mine's is you'll see it spike up a little bit higher than 14.5 volts it's not generally a problem but i would say if it's anything higher than 15 volts and your battery itself isn't charging well two things your alternator could be faulty or your battery is complete crap and needs to be replaced now that being said boys and girls if you are watching this video and attempting this job on another car for for whatever reason it may not be completely abnormal there are certain systems and cars that charge a little bit on the higher end and there are certain cars that charge on the lower end so you may need to look up the specifics for your car to understand what is normal but for this one and for the majority of vehicles out there 13.5 to 14.5 volts well boys and girls we are done with the alternator job as you can see it was relatively simple and if i didn't spend all this time rambling on it would literally take me usually between five and ten minutes to swap this alternator out so definitely not difficult and a job that you guys can do at home in the driveway to save yourself some money now i don't want you to think it's super easy provided you don't run into any issues with the tensioner bolt like i did it should be really easy of course, that being said, boys and girls, we are done with this one. Hopefully you found it entertaining as well as informative. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my new videos. And as always, thank you for watching. We will see you in the next one. Most commonly, it is an undercharging alternator. Most commonly, it is an undercharging alternator that you will face. Most times, it is an undercharging alternator or something that is not... Fuck, I don't know. Jesus. Now that... Oh, fucking compressor. On the positive side of your engine. Why is this so painful to fucking record today? Now, boys and girls, it has been about five minutes here and the battery charger has been filling our battery with 
magical pixies that are going in and, of course, boosting its power. That <laughs> sounds stupid. Oh, oh, fuck. Charger? Charger. Sounds very French, doesn't it? Now, boys and girls, this is one of the simplest jobs, as I said earlier, and it's something that you don't need to be afraid of. You just need a little bit of know-how, and you don't want to make any real mistakes. You all... <laughs> I'm fucking saying the exact same thing over again. What the fuck are they flying out there? Jet engine? Son of a bitch, man. And pause the goddamn film, because that fucking compressor came out again. We're gonna give that a nice 15... Yeah. Now we're gonna give that a nice 10 seconds there, boys and girls. And now we're gonna give that a nice five minutes there, boys and girls, between one to five minutes and see how it goes. I've already got all kinds of cuts and bruises that I care. Same thing like before when you were moving. Yeah. Of course, it wants to be more challenging right now. Okay, let's just fucking start that all over again. Fucking bitch. Get the fuck out of here. Fuck you. Please hit. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Now the moment of truth, boys and girls, with our alternator back in the car, we need to fire this thing up to see... <laughs> and see whether this guy is producing... Producing? What the fuck? Now let's... Oh, don't kick the battery. 13.5 volts and 14.5 volt. <laughs> now, boys and girls, as long as your alternator continues charging between 14.5 volts and... We usually, Jimmy, people do the lower number first. Stupid. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you never miss one of my... The fuck just happened to the fucking camera? Like some fucking hit it. A ghost or something. Son of a bitch. Well, boys and girls, there you have it. Definitely not a job that you guys can't do in the driveway at home and save yourself some money. It is definitely something you can do. And I don't know what the fuck I'm saying. I'm high from all the carbon monoxide fumes. Son of a bitch. You know. It's a doable job. I fuck man, why 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 Jimmy why?